Okay, we're here at the old colonial building in Calabar. This is where the British used to run the region out of before uh, they consolidated it all into one Nigerian colony. So we're gonna actually meet the curator and talk to him for a little bit. So we are talking about the volume of an English uh, slave trade from uh, Africa from 1692 to 1807. What we use this date? This date is 1690 because the first European to come to Africa were the Portuguese who came here and carried the trading activities. And by then the helicopter, the helicopter was a friend of Paul. Then in, that was in the 15th century. Then in the 15th century too, they handed over that place to the Spanish to use as a train center. Then in this 16th century, because of the activities of the slave trade, the British then came in and took that place from them to use it as a, a never bay to stop the slave air. Then 1807, first April, 1807 is when the slave trade ended in a British soil. But in Africa, it ended in 1833. And so why the two days are very uh, important in the history of uh, slave trade as far as it has to do with uh, Britain. Then you go to the chart, the chart is telling you the areas that were involved in the slave trade in Africa. And that the great number of slaves were carried from uh, Nigeria. And that's why today, most of the world, people from West Indies want to trace their way, trace their way back to either Lubala or to Ibo or to because those are the areas that were mostly affected during the Atlantic State Fair trade. Uh, the building, the old Sensing building was a building that was imported from uh, Britain in 1884 to house the early European administration of the Niger Coast Protectory. That plays a role in the cultural history of uh, Nigeria, both as an headquarter and we call it as a Mr. Guest uh, House. So in 1885, the building served as a headquarter of the uh, Niger, uh, headquarter of the Oil River Protectory. In 1894, it served as a headquarter of the uh, Niger Coast uh, Protectory. In 1900, it served as the headquarters of the Southern Nigeria, or Southern Protectorate. So you can see that in the practice of Nigeria, it has played an important role. The Biafran soldiers were camping here. They used like camping place. Camping oh, they use it as like barracks. Yes. And most of our active, and most of the things were destroyed. I'm getting They were using it as camping for them, for, for their officers to stay. Okay, so this was Biafra. officer barracks yeah, for Biafra. Yes. Why? Biafra. In 1959, the building and this com the whole compound were declared a national monument, number 20. Number 20? Yes. Then in 1986, the building and the compound were declared national museum, and it was called Old Recency Air Museum to showcase the rich evidence and relics of the Asante, of the colonial association here in Ole, Calabar. And that's why we are here today to see what is contained in the museum. So that museum was opened in 1986 as a museum. 1986 it became a museum? Yeah, it was a That house was used in uh, 1889. When we had the Benin massacre of 1889 by the British, the Uber of Benin was carried out a, a, a regional cleansing in its own area. And when he was carried it, the white men or strangers are not allowed to enter Benin City by then. So they asked for Benin to enter. They said they will not enter. They should wait after the, the region celebration, the offense where they can come in. They refused to come in and the people were killed. So because of that, they will not happen. So in 1887, they sent in British army to destroy that uh, empire. And when the empire was destroyed, the king, I mean the Oba, Oba Remy was captured and sent in the exile to Alabama. So he was one of the greatest Oba that was in, uh, in prison in here. And so it was in 1885 to 1887, 1888, that uh, place was opened as a prison for Tobon people and for uh, ships that were sent on exile.
So that was kept. That's so they kept chiefs in exile. Wow, yes. that's really important. Then. And the first chief that was used there was about the army of Benin. No, you are here Benin Kingdom, Benin mm -hmm. Empire, very popular in Nigeria. We went to Benin. We, uh, we carved this and all these things. So they are one of the uh, king, which was about very much. Wow. Okay. The name of this is called Monolis. Monolis. Monolith. Yes. And the local name is called Akwanchi. Akwanchi. It's the local name. Uh, in those days, before our parent, grandparents were, you know, in existence, we don't have fish, we don't have anything. So what they used to do is that if a great man, like a king, a chief, a warrior, a hunter, a trader died, your image would be carved on a stone like this and kept somewhere. Working for a second barrier. When a second barrier is going to come, you bring her to the play for that. And after that, you kept somewhere and watching as a deity. And so that's exactly what we are trying to do. But now, because of the presence of fisher, the other fisher will normally so what I trying to do is to go to the bush where they were coming to gather them and bring them out. So it's one of us to preserve our culture. And the culture, most of them, you find them in the graveyard. When that man is buried, at the time they bury it with you or they put it by yourself to show that you are a great oh, man. Oh, they bury it with you? And if you are a person who have a very big talk, uh, so I mean, when you to put uh, something to show that you are, if you have a very big jazz, I mean, uh, BS, they will come you and put jazz. Then you have that, we have to identify you to put it because they want people to know that you are the cousins. Who they were. Yes. So today is a time for dating, worship and listing, for power for it, the protection and Israel thing. So that is, that is called a uh, monolith. But look at it, it's called a quanchi. If you go closer, you can see the stuff and everything that is put down on it. One of the interesting things here that they had, for me at least interesting, outside of the old uh, colonial building, was they have like an old British telephone box. They still got your crown and everything. And this is it. This is where they ran Eastern Nigeria from for many, many years. There's even a good view over here over all the city down into the river what they told us was basically down this hillside is where they built all their government buildings all their government institutions like uh, bank jail courthouse stuff like that just so that the person who was actually in charge of the region would be able to look down and kind of oversee everything from this window right there i think that's going to be it from here i don't know if this will be the end of the video or if we're about to go to another place Let's find out. You probably know because the video just ended right now.